Hello everybody and welcome back to the games. I'm so happy that we're doing another Star Citizen video and I'm also very happy that we're going to do it over something we have already gone over but with new flavor, new spice. We're going to go over the Star Citizen economy again but with much more detail because of you guys because this community is fantastic. You guys put down comments that were so engaging, so intelligent and well thought out that really I, it's an enjoyable experience to go back to that video and just read all the comments. That's how fun it was for me to relive it. I, I go back to that video every once in a while because there's it's just it's a living document. There's so much more information on this video that you can just push the annotation if you want right now and get to the nitty gritty and get your hands dirty. We've got uh, a gentleman in the Star Citizen community who actually put together tons of research from things that he had watched from 10 from the chairman and uh, meet the devs and all these uh, forum posts that he had, has accumulated all this data and put down charts and links and just so much fantastic thing that the, the, the economist in me, the trader in me, just like I, I had a brain gasm. I think I, I, I couldn't focus anymore. I loved it. So we will talk about that right now. I want to talk about this 90-10 ratio between NPC and human, and it worries me a little bit. And let me tell you why it worries me a little bit. When you have a player-driven economy, you have values that are based upon players' perception of the items. The scarcity of it or the abundance of it affect the value. What it does affects the value and what people do to manipulate the price as well also affects the value if only 10 percent of that is done by us and 90 percent is done by this npc artificial intelligence where's the room for profit if an item is being built by the thousands over and over again and i see it in the quay let's just say it's a ship and NPCs put them out daily. And every day they're programmed to put them out in the thousands in a particular area over and over again. And no matter what I do to the market, I could buy a thousand hornets. And the next day there'll be another thousand hornets. And another thousand hornets. And another thousand hornets. There is no reason for me to make those hornets. Unless I can take items from the NPC market or the player driven market, however it's going to be displayed for me, and, and buy them at such a low price that I can actually beat the NPC pricing, then it's viable. But I don't feel like that's the way it's going to be. I mean, in a 90 10 market, there's not a lot of flexibility with pricing because. It's already pre-programmed in there every day you wake up. And so how do I get a foot in the door? How do I break into a market when the market's already rigged against me? It's already set against me. Ships, it can be anything. It could be weapons. It could be a particular gun that's always made by NPCs. The NPC puts out pro product, uh, a finished product. The NPC could put out some mineral that is always out there and it's for, oh look there's 72,345 every day of the same item 72,345 of the same item at this and the price very rarely fluctuates because it's 90% of its npc and 10% uh is is us and how can 10% affect the 90% it's just overwhelming and that's what i worry about is this 90 10 split going to put items on the market that's just going to be rampant there's no sense in putting any items to compete with it because there's no money in it. See, I like player-driven economies because when something is scarce, I take advantage of it. Or I take an abundant item and I make it scarce because I buy it all. And I, I hold on to it and then I go, oh, you wanted that thing for $3? You can't find it anywhere? I have it, but it's 10 <laughs> And see, that's player-driven. I can't necessarily take that product and sell it if I'm buying it from NPCs because guess what? It's going to be there tomorrow. Now, there's going to be some pl players some in the player base that are going to cry about that. I don't have the item. I, I need the item. you got to sell the item. I, I need the item on the market all the time. I need, I need it. 
well, <laughs> I'd rather have a player come in and say, hey, there's nothing here. I know somebody's screwing with the market here. I'm going to make thousands of this item and then drop it down. That's a trade war. And that's fun because wars aren't just sitting in the cockpit shooting things. There's other types of wars. Economic wars are happening all around you in real life all the time. Trade agreements, oil. How real do you want it? How real do you want this economy? It's going to sound really cold right now, but money's cold. Capital's cold. Markets are cold. Well, they're hot sometimes too, <laughs> depending upon what side of the money you're on. But I want an economy that is a real economy. In a, in a 90 10 economy, you don't have a real economy. I want there to be disadvantages and advantages for people. I want people to go into a market and not have the things that they want or need because the resourcefulness of that individual will shine or not. <laughs> and that is capitalism. That is reality with any business, with any venture. You either make it or you don't. This is how markets are born. This is entrepreneurship. This is the economy in itself. This is the, 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 the spring from which it flows, the minds, the entrepreneurs that create something from nothing. This is how real economies start. In a 90-10 format, you have the NPCs spitting out product. I don't even know if it's relatable to the items and if the quantities are true, tangible quantities. How did, how did those hornets get made? How did those guns get made? Did they come from actual resources that were mined from NPCs or humans? Or did they just spring from nowhere and there's the number? How is that uh, populated into the system? I'm not quite sure. I, I need to know as a trader. I need to know as somebody who's interested in a market if these numbers are actually true values or not. Now, some of that might be answered in the post that we're going to get into and, and we will get into that and answer maybe some of these questions that I'm asking right now. I'm going to get off that a little bit, but that's one of the reasons the 90-10 split does scare me. Now, <clears throat> I understand why it exists. It exists, at least in theory, I understand it because imagine you're creating this game, the Star Citizen game, <laughs> and it's it's going to be massive. It's going to cover all different areas and genres, and you want the market to be sustainable. Well, Chris may have the data that tells him how many Star Citizens will enter the game. He's not quite sure how much demand there's going to be with the amount of people that are entering the game. So he's saturating the supply. He wants to make sure all the supply is there when you get in the game initially, at least that's what I'm hoping that this 90, 10 split is because he's not sure how much of any item is going to be taken out of the market, how much demand there's going to be. He wants to oversupply, oversaturate it so that there's no need for us to worry. Sorry, I have to get some water. <laughs> Whew. That's I, I'm just chilling out here with you guys. It's a rainy night. And I said, this is the best time to make videos. <laughs> you know, I love just chilling out talking to you guys. And I, I love your guys' comments. So, you know, just chill out, relax, grab something to eat. And uh, if you got a comment, put it down while, while I'm talking because I just dig that. But one of those really cool, chill, rainy nights here. Been hot all day. Whew. Hold on a second. Let me get this water. Mm. All right. I'm snugging cozy inside the hangar here but what's up with the dude why does he look like this i uh, he looks kind of dopey but anyway <laughs> so one of the reasons why the 90 10 split scares me there's multiple reasons more that i could get into but i won't go too far in depth because i don't want to bore you guys with tons of detail but a market really is player driven is human driven in real life there are quant funds q u a n t which, which is short for quantitative funds where hedge funds and hedge fund managers and fund managers, they you're talking millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, create these rooms with tons of servers and computers with computing power that make micro transaction trades between actual real trades on the marketplace. And these computers have software designed to take fractions of a penny <laughs> and trade this while you are in the middle of a buy or sell order on the real stock exchange 
So while you're actually trading a stock or trading a commodity or trading capital and you put in your orders, the, the, the quant funds or the, the servers dedicated towards looking at your trade are actually making micro trades in between your buy and sell orders on the market and it, it adds up. And some people have issues with this because they believe that it puts a false value to what it is that they're trading. And nothing so evident than a couple years back when the market just dropped out of the blue uh, uh, over a thousand some points in the day. And there was no news. There was no anything. And people were scratching their heads like, what in the hell is going on? Something triggered an event. And it, it, they called it the fat finger event. And it was a trader who misaligned one of the decimals. Like he went out too many zeros and he pressed enter at a large bank. And all of these quant funds, all of these computers dedicated to looking at trades saw that and reacted off of it based upon a formula that was pre-programmed by software engineers, by computer programmers. And they just the market nosedive and then boop pop back up just magic <laughs> and that's the scary thing about having an artificial intelligent economy in the real world when computers run it and humans aren't even involved anymore you almost feel like the game is kind of rigged against you and that's another thing with any type of market if i'm coming into the star citizen economy and it's a 90 10 economy like the issues that i had mentioned before how do i trade against that how can i trade against that how can i make money from that it's hard when uh, the NPCs are always putting items out. Where's, where's my slice at? How do I get into the market? What am I going to sell? And why don't I have the ability to sell and buy whatever it is that I want and not have to worry about it being flooded or saturated by more NPC sell orders the next day? So anyway, whew, okay, that's out of the way and that's my concerns with it. Now, will he or will he not reduce the ratio? That is what I am concerned about because I do want a higher human ratio to NPC ratio. SIG in itself has to be like the Federal Reserve. They have to, to regulate this ratio just like the Federal Reserve does to our very own money, our capital. Our Federal Reserve prints money and destroys it based upon values of inflation and deflation on actual tangible um, asset classes like commodities, anything you can drop on your foot and say ow to, like gold, silver, barrel oil, anything that, that is hard and you can physically knock it up against something uh, is a commodity. Now in layman's terms, the Federal Reserve comes in and they, they get these multiple streams of data from unemployment numbers to housing data to uh, inflation, deflation numbers, uh, tons of different types of streams of data, and they decide w how to act, how how we need to act as a government. What do we need to do? Do we need to print more money? Do we need to, to take more money out of the system? How are we going to do this to combat uh, inflation, deflation? You know, food, prices of food go up, uh, price of oil goes up. Uh, more money is being sloshed into to assets and, and uh, or, or, you know, maybe too much money's out there and the money's really not worth anything anymore. Uh, they help with perceptions of, of marketplace values. And I think this is where SIG should come in and, and really kind of take this 90-10 ratio and maybe reduce it down for if they want a realistic market, this is what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to take it down. Otherwise, you're going to have a very disenfranchised trader industrial class that is not going to be interested in this game. You're going to have people that know what's up especially in Star Citizen, probably one of the most intelligent communities I've ever witnessed in any gaming community ever, besides our own. <laughs> and if they see that there is any lackluster kind of uh, response to, to uh, worries that they have, why are those types of people going to be in the game? You need those people in the game because they help give you items that you need. They, they make them. 
They sell them. It's a, it's a whole class of people. You can't just, you know, push them to the side and say, ah, oh, it's not really, doesn't matter. I just want to fly my ship and blow up things. Okay, that's great. So do I. But I want to make sure that when I'm buying and selling things on the market that, that the values are, are somewhat real. The marketplace works itself out. Yeah, you're going to have people that manipulate markets, and that's great. I want that to happen in, in various different regions that are maybe a little bit outworld, farther, for, uh, you know, in the fringe. That's fine. Let the prices be all over the place. Let it be violent. Let it be that way. That's the way that it is. That's the way the real world is. And that's what I want in this game. I want a, I want a real market. Why am I making this analogy? Why am I making this comparison? Because SIG is going to have to do the same thing with the, with the ratio as far as I'm concerned. They cannot keep it at an inflated 90-10 because people who really trade, people that have fun in, a, in an economy, people that know about economies, people that know about markets, won't find any appeal to a marketplace that is set up 90-10. I'm saying it as somebody who is very knowledgeable in that area that, that came from a background of trading and, and economics courses and uh, trading in EVE and, oh, okay, there's going to be some trolls that are like, oh, well, this guy said he took an economics course, so he knows it all. No, I don't know it all. Water break. Hold on a second. Whew. Talk. See, we're talking a little too much here. We got to get into that material. We got to get into that material. Mm. Anyhow, let's get into that material. What are we doing? Let me get this set up here, and we'll do it. All right, let's get to the good stuff. That's why we're here, right? We want to see what it, this is all about. We we want the details. We want what what is going to happen when I play the game. That's why you pushed either the annotation or you're finally here after listening to the amazing breathiness that I have. Uh, <laughs> this is Chatos, guys, an amazing contributor to the Star Citizen community. And if there's any way to like everything that this guy posts, I would do it because I have spent some time reading everything that he's talked about. He's talked about game mechanics as far as bounty hunting and uh, contracts and you can just go look at his posts. I, I highly recommend it. I took a lot of time to look at this and this man knows what is up. He's, he's talking about the economy and, and this chart really explains it very well. I know with my recording software, you can't see the arrow on my screen right now. So I'm gonna try and explain this to you and break it down the way that I see it. He's basically split up everything money monetarily wise into industry goods and maintenance. Okay, and then the center shows transportation going to maintenance and goods, combat. If you trace the lines, you can see exactly how everything relates to one another in an economic standpoint in terms of employment, which is really excellent. The man knows his stuff. I highly recommend you check him out. Basic goods, it shows about the industry. And if you look at the bottom right, you see customization of types of goods, then traces back to premium goods, which will, would have a premium and you make money on them, which also traces back to exploration because there's exploration involved in finding those goods and salvage materials over on the good side on the bottom left, you get salvage materials, right? I go to salvage materials and it's found through exploration. Also goes into production nodes. And in the production nodes, it flies right over to basic goods. So from salvage materials, you can create basic goods from a production node. A production node would be a place where you can actually have a manufacturing plant. Refinery lab, right? Refinery lab's great from refined minerals, raw materials, going back to resource gathering, which would be miners, stuff like that. Combat, uh, as far as capital uh, gained through combat, you can be a bounty hunter, mercenary escort, law enforcement, piracy. All these things really affect the economy within the star citizen economy. Very well done. Very, very well done. And um, also, we get into a rough theory of how different activities are interconnected. He's talking about population, node types, training node types. Everything is connected together in an economy, and he actually separates these things, draws it out. You can check it in the link below after this uh, discussion. You can go there. I would highly recommend you just look at this and disseminate the information for yourself if you're really into this because some of you aren't going to be into this, and some of you are. He also gets into how to build a laser cannon. Look at all the different types of things that are involved to create it. Very well done. Uh, he get to the anatomy of a node, how each node works, and how it affects the star citizens in the game. This man put in a lot of work, and he got this material through all of his efforts and researching 
all the episodes put out by Star Citizen, uh, uh, by the Star Citizen, by the SIG creators. Uh, really interesting here on the population section. If you look at it, the player population will be about 10% of the NPC population. Now, this is where I kind of like kind of took a step back because I said to myself, all the things that I had talked about previously about the 90-10 ratio, was this derived from that particular comment in the population of a planet? Because if it is the population of a planet, NPCs are walking around the planet and there's 90% of them and 10% of you, that does not necessarily mean that it is a 90-10 marketplace. So very interesting comment or very interesting blurb right there. And I, the, this is great. Items and loot, okay? The, there will not, you will be able to salvage some items from destroyed ships, right? But there will not be traditional loot drops, okay? So you're not going to have those spawns where you're just getting the same loot from same places. I thank God for that. How different, how refreshing, how appealing. I love it. Most things have to be created. And when, when you find items and you're out in space as an explorer or you just happen to stumble upon an alien ship, those unique items can be equipped on your ship and nobody else can have that. Oh, uh, <laughs> no farming. God, thank you. This this like I just got goosebumps. I just got <laughs> I just got the goosebumps, man. And all the different money sinks with taxes and fees and great. You need money sinks. Why are money sinks important? Because if without the money sinks, there becomes a currency influx. There's too much currency. So you need the money sinks to kind of take that out of the system so that people just don't become gluttonous. And and Look at all the sources he lists here. I have to say, if you have the time, thank this man because this material was an eye opener and somebody in our community, and I, I swear if I would put you up here right now, my friend, I couldn't find it in the comments on the original video and I, I apologize. I'll put an annotation here if anybody can find the original comment on the video with, with the, the gentleman uh, from our community who put this uh, in our video thank you because when i saw this it opened up my eyes nobody else has this material out on youtube right now nobody i i i'm i think i'm the first to hear to list it and it's because of you guys and i appreciate that now one of the things i really really love uh let's see the, 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 the capital resource spreadsheet let's get into that this is fantastic look at this spreadsheet tells you system names okay here uh, you can see as I go down here the ownership if it's pirate if it's UEE uh, alien uh, you know unaligned and it, it goes down and it actually shows you what they generally import what they export the crime status the black market if they have one or not there's a black market because if you're trading and you're doing illegal things, you can't necessarily sell it to the real market. Love that. Thank you. Thank you so very much. <laughs> and then you go down in here, trade by planet and system, trade by commodity. Here's your different types of commodities. This is nitty gritty details. This is nitty gritty, dirty details. I love it. Minerals and gases, ships, technology, weapons, goods, labor, and illegal. <laughs> What's the illegal? Biological, narcotics, slaves. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm sucking it up. I love it. <laughs> Get too excited. Hold on here. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> Commodities, antimatter, copper, crude oil, hydrogen, iron ore, iron, mercury, refined base metals. Okay, plan is to buy from, plan is to sell to. Okay, now this is where I get a little bit concerned. Don't tell me where I can sell it to. I mean, I, I get you're tipping it to me, but I want a free marketplace where people are just going to need this regardless. I don't want to sell to the NPC market. This gets me back into the rant that I get into with PVE, you know, a player versus environment. I want player versus player. I want everything player versus player. There's going to be NPC grade. I'll, I'll do the NPC gig. That's cool. I need money to start out with. But as I continue to evolve in the game, I want player versus player. And people that want the PV experience, I'm not. I'm not dissing you guys. 
That's fine. The market could be there for you, but I want the intricacies. I want the the complete raw visceral experience of player versus player because it is a real environment creating a real environment is important to me somebody who has gamed for nearly 30 years almost i need to have that challenge it is a challenge but anyway I, I'm getting I'm getting off topic here. This is great. This one here. Let's see the star map. Look at this. Look at this. It's amazing. Oh my god! If you, I highly recommend you check this link out right after I I get done talking to you guys. If you go in here, you will actually be able to move and look at the planets that give you. Uh, Ugh, information about the planets and everything that you need. This is fantastic, guys. Highly recommend it. I'm not going to get too much into it because now it's up to you, guys. I gave you the information that you needed. This is the games. And if you enjoy it, you need to subscribe. I have a Patreon page. You can go there. Links down below as well if you want to help support us, help support the community. All money that is that is donated and pledged to us will be put right back into the community through giveaways. You can ask anybody here. We give away free games. We have a good time. Thanks, everybody, for listening to me. I hope this helped you all. Fare thee well, star citizens, and fare thee well, gamers. Stay tuned for another episode.